Okay, so let's look at um, our circle up here. And I've divided it. What fraction names each of these angles? And I didn't put a question mark, but do you know what I meant? There you go. Which, what fraction names each of these angles? Aureli, what did you get? Right angles. Uh, they are all right angle, but that's not what I'm looking for, Bella. One fourth. One fourth. That's a fraction. So when I'm looking for a fraction, I'm looking for something like this. A numerator, oops, a numerator over a denominator. What if the circle is divided into eight equal parts? What fraction would name each part, class? One-eighth. One-eighth would name each part. In this case, this is one-fourth. This is one-fourth. This is one-fourth. This is one-fourth. Remember, um, just to review yes, yesterday's lesson or last week's lesson, if I was starting at this point and going to here, how much of a turn was that? One. One fourth. One fourth. If I started here and went to here, how much of a turn was One that? Half. One half, or we can also call it two fourths. What if I was doing this turn? Raise your hand if you know. Raise your hand. Luna. Three fourths. Three fourths. And what if I went all the way from here, all the way around, back to here? Past it. One whole, or if we were doing it in fractions, it would look like what class? Four fourths. Four fourths. Four four okay. Today we're going to start learning about degrees. I know I've heard some of you say 90 degrees before. Now we're going to talk about what that means. So go ahead and turn to 11 2. You can use what you know about angles and fraction, fractional parts of a circle to understand angle measurement. Angles are measured in units called degrees. So that's what the degrees are. Think of a circle divided into 360 equal parts. So we've just done a circle divided into fourths, and then we did a hypothetical. What if I had one that was drawn into eighths, right? And when I said that, you knew that it was one eighth, each part. So each section that's created would be one three hundred and 60th. That's a lot of parts, isn't it? Dividing a circle into that. So one degree is a very small amount. If you look at this, it's showing you one degree. You can't even see it. So if we look at this right here, you can't even barely see that it's a degree. The sections that it's creating on this circle are so small that you can't even see it. But if you continue those rays, all the way out, you see where they start to separate, finally. And you can start to see that it's a very small measure. Now when we did the one, let's say if we did one fourth, now I'm going to split it into one eighth. If I continued this one this way, and this one this way, it's way easier to see. Right? This is doing the same thing, only it's doing it with one three hundred and sixtieth. Because there's 360 degrees in a circle. Raise your hand if you have been had experience with that before. Degrees of circles. If you dance, if you a lot even sports, sometimes you have experience with that already. Okay. The angle between two spokes of the bicycle wheel turns through 10 360ths of a circle. What is the measure of the angle between the spokes? So if we look at our example down here, we see here's a spoke. If you had a bike that you were riding and you guys, the little metal spokes, they're about that far apart. Okay? Now as you continue to go, you see how big that angle gets. You can start to see that it's an angle. If this part right here represents 10 360th of that circle, how many degrees do you think it's rep is represented there? What do you think, Angeline? Ten. Ten degrees. Because each one, each part that's one is counts as one degree. So if you have ten of them, 
it's going to equal 10 degrees. It's no different than what we were doing with the circle with the fourths and the eighths, only we're talking about a lot of them. That's the only difference. So if you get stuck on how that works, think about back. Okay, if I was doing this with fourths, how would I represent it or how would I look at it? So the measure of the angles between the spokes is what? 10 degrees between the spokes. Let me ask you a really tough question. If the angle, the measure of the angle between the spokes is 10, how many spokes do you think there are? I want you to think about it for a minute. Okay, so if they were 10 degrees apart, there would be 36. How, did, how many of you understand where that came from? Who thinks they can explain what Jaden was thinking? Andy, what do you think Jaden was thinking? <coughs> Okay, so he did the 10 and multiplied it by 36, and that equals 360 degrees. So what would be the actual, because that's true, that's how we can double check it. But to get the 36 in the first place, how do you think he got the 36 in the first place, Owen? So he did the 360 degrees divided by the 10 degrees for each spoke. Okay. Um, I want you to think next about how many degrees is the measure of the entire circle. So we've talked about it's one, four fourths if we go around the circle. How many degrees would that be? What do you think, Ethan? 360. 360 to get all the way around. Okay. So if we started here to get back to here is 360. Find the measure of a right angle. We so if we have a right angle, and when I had this on the board, Aureli said it is a right angle. We were looking for a fraction, but she did tell us it was a right angle. What fraction of the circle was that? Go ahead, class. One fourth. So a right angle makes a fourth of a turn. Another way we, we say that is a quarter of a turn. <coughs> We can, if we forget how many degrees that is, if we forget how many degrees that is, we can find an equivalent fraction. Now it gets really messy. It's much easier to just remember. Because I can say, my, I know my full circle is 360 degrees, so I can say how many times do I multiply four times to get to 360? Well, three, 36 is a lot easier. Four times what number equals 36? Nine. Nine. So four times what number is going to equal 360? Nine. Nine. 90. So when I multiply the 90 times the 1, I'm going to get 90. Okay? But we've already established that. If you just remember that it's 90, then that will be a lot easier. Okay. Four times 9 equals 36, so four times 90 equals 360. All right. Right? 90 360ths in degrees. An angle tur that turns through one 360th of a circle measures one degree. Okay, an angle that turns through 90 360ths of a circle measures 90 degrees. So we've just decided that if the angle is 390 360ths, it measures how many degrees? 90. So a right angle is how many degrees? 90. Now when we were doing angles last week or two weeks ago, several of you would say 90 degrees because you already understand that that's 90 degrees. Okay. Find the measure of a straight angle. Through what fraction of a circle does a straight angle turn? So if we look at our circle here, and we started here, and then we get to here, how, how much of a circle? What fraction of the circle did we rotate, Sophia? One half. One half of a circle. So now I'm going to find the equivalent fraction to one half that is 360, 360ths as a denominator. 
2 times 18 equals 36. So 2 times 180 would equal 360. We can also take the measurement of the first one that we did up here, that we knew the quarter. How much was a quarter? 90. 90. What's 90 times 2? 180. So here's 1, here's 2. So I could have also done it that way, which will help you when you get to this one to figure out how many degrees that is. I'm not just talking about it right now. Okay, so a straight, a straight angle measures how many degrees? 180 degrees, like that. How can you describe the measure of an acute angle in degrees? So basically, you're going to say in words any acute angle that you would know in the degrees. You have to think about what acute means. How would you describe the measure of an acute angle in degrees? Using You can use greater than, less than, equals. Less than? Okay. An acute angle is less than 90 degrees. Um, so he said anything bigger than 90 degrees. So obtuse is greater than 90 degrees. Okay. How many of you agree with that? Okay, what about if this is my, here's my starting point. Okay. Would you agree that that's bigger than 90? Yes. Yes. Would you agree that that's obtuse? Yes. yes. Would you agree that that's bigger than 90? Yes. Would you agree that that's obtuse? Yes. No. It is not obtuse. It's not an obtuse angle. It's larger than a straight angle. So it's not an obtuse angle. So while it needs to be greater than 90, it has to be less than something, too. What does it have to be less than? Raise your hand if you know. Andy. Less than 180 degrees. Okay? So an obtuse angle is any angle that falls in this area. So here, our angle started here. Well, this is backwards. But if our, our angle starts here, <coughs> and that's 90 right here, it's anything in that area between the 90 and the 180. Okay? So an obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So, so now we have this circle over here that shows what fraction of the circle? What fraction of the circle is shown here, class? One third. One third. So to figure out, it's not as easy as just dividing a circle into half, right? But to figure out what degrees is represented here, we just take the one-third, because we know it's one-third, and we know that the equivalent fraction has to have a denominator of 360. So now we just decide what number times 306, what number times 3 equals 36? 12. So 3 times 12 equals 36. That's right here. So... 3 times 120 will equal 360. So this is 120 degrees. This is equivalent fractions on a larger scale. That's all it is. And so the measure of the angle is 120 degrees. Look at number 2. The fraction it gives us is in what size parts? 360ths. And that's a review. That's a review of fractions that remembering that the size of the parts is the denominator. So the size of the parts are 360ths. It's already in 360ths, so we don't have to convert it to that. And we know how many do we have? 45, 45 of them. So 45 360ths is going to be how many degrees, class? 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Remember, as soon as we've converted this to 360 on, as our denominator, we take whatever we have on the top and we make that our degrees. That's how many degrees it is. So now I'm looking at 12s. Is this in the proper format to turn into degrees? No. 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 What do I need to change my, new, my denominator to? 360. 360. 
360. What number do I need to multiply my 12 by to get 360? Well, I know 36. 12 times what number equals 36? 3. 3 equals 36. So then 12 times another number equals 360. What 12 times what number is going to equal 360, class? 30. So if I know that, 12 times 30 equals 36, then I have to do 1 times 30 on the top, and I get 30. This is equivalent fractions. This is going back to a lesson like lesson chapter 8. Equivalent fractions, okay? So now I have this in terms of 360ths. Can I convert this now to the degrees? Yes. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell him how many degrees that's. That, how many degrees? 30. 30. 30 degrees. Okay, let's look at number four real quick before I send you on your own. Tell the measure of the angle in degrees. I have 360, 360 ths. How many degrees is represented there? 360 degrees. Okay.